Guys, what I want to do, and I want to only take about half an hour to do it because I've tried to make a, an 8.30 commitment to us here, is I want to talk about the case that's been put in front of us. How many of you have read the case? Okay. Um, so you got the case now, you've got it digitally, you've got it uh, in paper. You need to read the case, and I'm going to challenge you to do exactly the same thing I did. Uh, I've got a lot of red on this, and I've got a whole other page of, of handwritten comments uh, that are red as well. Okay, And if you go through, you'll see I've, I'm asking questions all over the place with this thing. That's what you guys need to do. I would start by having a work session, whether you are all together in the same place and time physically or simply digitally. I don't think it makes any difference. And if, and if it does make a difference to you, start getting used to digitally communicating. Now, that, I don't mean just on chat. I think you probably ought to be on a telephone you know, together. Maybe you've got some chat going on, but you don't need to be sitting in the same room at the same time. That way, you can deal with a lot more scheduling problems and not have them be in your way. I think the first thing you guys need to do is sometime in the next couple of days, the next 48 hours, you need to sit down together as teams and just beat this up. And you, to do that effectively, you have to have done it first individually, right, personally. So just walk through this thing. What screams out at you? What makes sense to you? What do you think you can improve upon? Uh, as uh, Colton and I were talking about this earlier, as he read this through this, he said there's a lot of nuance in this deal, which simply means we're going to have 25 or so colleges that are likely to have 25 or so different outcomes and not because they're wrong and others are right, but because they each focused on different elements of this, which I'm certain is intended, right? And that's the only way you get to, you're get you going to be able to differentiate <coughs> team outcomes, presentations, and such. So that's the first thing that you need to do. I think you need to get very specific and hold each other highly accountable to a division of labor and to time frames. So, uh, so Mateo and Val, you guys need to, for your individual teams, come up with a Gantt chart or something like it that says, here we are 26, uh, 27, 24 days from now is our deliverable, October 19th. We must have a URL that we can give to the BB valuation guys, uh, and we're going to work backwards from that as to exactly what has to happen when, so we need to get it, so we get it all done. So we're T minus 24 but you're also R minus 16. What am I talking about? Are you recording off the video? No. I mean, Jeff knows. When do I leave for in lieu with our MBA groups? 10. 16 days. Okay? So I go off a part of your grid 16 days from now. Now, you might see that's good news, by the way. Okay? Um, and, and maybe it is. And I will be of limited access and limited value for you in what arguably is one of the most important parts of this, the last nine days of your production. Okay? So you need to start thinking about your deliverable date and working backwards into a, a schedule. What needs to happen when? Who needs to get it done? And you don't need to do that in vacuums. I'll help you guys do that. Okay? And you should take input from your team on, on that as well. There's a fine line. Excuse me fine line between a mentor or an instructor designing the whole thing for you and just having you execute it with all our ideas, in which case it's not a collegiate challenge. My guess is there are going to be some people that did that. Some of you grew up and maybe were part of Boy Scouts and did Pinewood Derby, where you know that two-thirds of the little cars were built by dad, and, and that's a lie because actually 98% of them were built by dad, okay, but they only confessed the two-thirds, right? Well, we can try to do that. I don't know that it would be terribly successful for you in terms of the competition, and I know it would be terribly unsuccessful for you in terms of your uh, development that should take place as you're going through this and what you're going to learn, okay? Kuchani, you've been involved in the CFA Challenge as Rob Patterson has mentored teams through that. How hands-on is Rob in what the teams are actually doing? Well, he just kind of explained to us how it works, and we actually had another mentor, Matt. Mm -hmm. Discuss with both of them what what do you think is the best way to go about them, but you should have, like the valuation and stuff you can do with everything yourself. Yeah, everything yourself, right? Yeah. So that you guys have been pretty much doing. It. <coughs> Please. I think one of the beneficial factors that played into being on the CFA was uh, 
presenting multiple times in class and get and getting countless feedback from not only students in the class but also a ton of professors that came to also listen. And you're going to have that. Okay. I've already begun to enlist professors to A, be here physically mm -hmm. for us on a couple of different venues and B, view various iterations of the video that you'll be preparing. Okay. Okay. So, so review, critiquing and reviewing it and let yeah. you go back and making it better. All right. So we're going to have at least two of those uh, uh, sessions where you'll have multiple outsiders, if you will, from this little group here as you're doing your presentation, your presentations. Yeah. Okay. Um, but let's walk through a couple of items on this that I think you really want to focus on. Um, somebody needs to be responsible to take the financials that are here, somebody from each of the two teams, and put them into our spreadsheets. Okay? You've done that already, right? So, Halfway done? With this? Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Good, good. Uh, make sure that you've used a format such that we can not only be considering constant returns to scale, but we can, sit, we can consider changing returns to scale as well. And if you need any help in doing that, th those are the, um, the Leland Manufacturing case uh, and the Farm Hill Group cases, okay? And you still need to join? Good, well Leland's got both built in there, so good. So here's part of why I'm saying this. I don't think that this company has reached optimal scale given their revenues. And by the way, if you look at other casual men's clothing <clears throat> companies, their gross profit margin sucks. They're not even close to Joseph A. Banks before the merger. They're not even close to um, uh, Men's Warehouse now. Arguably, those aren't casual, so I took a look at Tommy Bahamas. And uh, the other one will come to me in a minute. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and this guy's margins are just horrible. Now, we've been given here a bunch of comps, right? How good are the comps? We've got comps for $44 million in revenues. This has $500 million. We've got comps for $1.3 billion in revenues. I think there's enough comps here that we can boil this down into a couple of different sets of comps. The comps that really do seem to fit our case, in which case you maybe can use a mean or a median from those, and then the comps that might be aspirational. So there's some companies here that in the concert apparently are run really well. Maybe we can have some aspirational multiples as this company grows, or aspirational forecast ratios as this company grows to get better returns to scale. You're gonna find that what will probably differentiate teams one through 25 or 24 isn't whether or not you can run a DCF. Because a monkey and an iPad can run the DCF, right? It's the artistry that's used into thinking about the variations on the themes such that we can consider what the real valuation is, what the real values are here. If you look at it, we're being asked to consider several different items, including the fourth one, how can we structure a proposal that, 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 that is best for the company, so the stakeholders to the firm inside, that satisfies the Martinez family, uh, who's the, the <coughs> owners, and placates shareholders. Okay. So we, and so we want to, we're being asked to do that. When you dig into this, you're going to see that Juanita Martinez is the president of the company. She's getting ready to retire. Max Martinez, her son, uh, is who she thinks her heir apparent is. And in this casual men's clothing manufacturer, his next best idea is leather jogging shorts. Now look at me. I don't do it all love jogging. Okay, not a <laughs> really material for sure. Leather jogging shorts, and this is the heir apparent. The, some of the other insiders in the company already have qualms about it. He says, and some of they say, echoing him, the company's already tightly run. But when you look at some of their numbers, their gross margins, their operating margin compared to some of their peer group, they are not tightly run. There are, there's a mile. Of, of space in between some of these things, that we can craft stories and be creative and give some really interesting output. So I want you to start to think about that. Are there aspirational multiples that can be seen here? Are there, is there a peer group of, of real comps and then some comps that we need to not pay attention to? I would think if I was designing something like this and giving us this information, I'd put some red herrings in here. I'd put some stuff that you should not be paying attention to, right? I don't know if they did that or not, but it sure looks that way to me. Okay. Um, 
I think that uh, you're going to find here that they're focusing on EV EBITDA, which I think you would say there's a lot of reason to do that. So uh, I think that's probably true. EV sales might be credible. EV something else might be credible. I would start to look at some of the uh, multiples for these comps and see what else might give us some credibility here. Because again, it's not presenting that which is expected is not going to win you the competition. Presenting that which is unexpected and credible will help you win the competition. Including, they've given us a whole set of multiples, or rather a whole set of comps. They've also described the company for us. What do you say you go find some comps that aren't some of their given comps? And we can then say, well, we use your comps. How do we know which ones are given comps versus <laughs> the other ones? Well, they can't say they've given comps. They've given comps. So you they give the numbers, though. You don't give the numbers. Oh, yes. okay. As of 2013. Or now. Good question. <laughs> and I'm trying to see if we've been given some in guidance on that. My original, my immediate thought is we are valuing it as of the end of uh, 2012 or 13, because 14 and beyond is all projected. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have any projections for, pardon? In addition to this, there was going to be some more additional information given yeah. at Georgia State? And I haven't seen any additional information oh, yet. Good. I think this is it. The only other material I think we're going to see is we're going to get some links to prior year's videos. Okay, haven't seen them yet, and you know how timely these guys are, right? We might get a week before it's due. Well, yeah, and I'm, I'm hopeful. And we'll be assigned two mentors, if you will, from their national panel, which means I think we're going to have two people we might be able to ask a couple of questions of, I mean, a couple of venues. I'm not terrible, I don't want to be terribly reliant on what else we expect to get from them, yeah. because we, we, we've all known their timeliness. The, the, for us, lack of a better term, the credibility in giving stuff, right? Um, but so I think, Jeff, correct me if you think I'm wrong, uh, they gave us estimates uh, for 2013, suggesting we were part of the way into the year, and then projections for 14 through 18. So I think we value it as of the end of 12 or the end of 13. Yeah, I, I would, uh, I, I think that's right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I would probably pick June 30, 13, but I, that, that makes it probably more complicated dealing with the partial year. You may just want to do... Uh, you want to do at the end of 12? At the end of 12. I think we pick a date, and then we load the things heavily we can, right? So the, I'll, I'll tell you, the impression I'm under is that they, we're in mid-13. They need to make a decision probably by the end of 13, and so it may be more appropriate to... To use 13? At the end of 13. Yeah. I mean, that sounds, that sounds reasonable. Okay. Which means you've got to pull your multiples, not as of today, right. but as of, as of 2013. Which means, if you're looking at comps, transactions that happened in 14 and beyond <coughs> on the table. That's how it works. You, 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 you filter, so you ignore them. Yeah. I, I'm just looking at, like, um, here, on the first page, it says that the total revenue is going I think we should know what's on the financials. In yep, instead of the, the casual narrative. Yeah. Okay. Um, you're going to find a bunch of these. Okay. Um, here's a couple of things. They allude to uh, running a tight ship at the end of paragraph two, uh, run a pretty lean ship. The max is, is a COO, second in command, with his leather shorts. Okay. Um, and you, when you look at them against the cops, cops, it doesn't suggest we're running a tight ship. So we might be able to model valuation if it's in the hands of a private equity firm that would run a tight ship. Because I'm thinking most private equity firms are pretty good at running tight ships. Okay, they didn't hire Max. Okay. Um, you're going to find that they, they allude to an enterprise value here, but they, but if you add things up, uh, the EV, the enterprise value doesn't add up. Um, We've got a 64-year-old uh, CEO that says she doesn't want to retire until she leaves the uh, firm in good hands. 
Uh, but she's 64 years old, she's got a price. She's got a price, right? Okay. Um, can I come back to one Would you please? Made, uh, when, when, when you made the comment, Colton, mm -hmm. let's, let's just go with what's on the financials. We may not want to do that. Let me throw okay, an idea out there. I was saying specifically in the terms of the, for, for, 20, no, for 2013, that they're estimated as 558. <clears throat> they're saying we did around 500. Oh. We, we, we may want to use that to our advantage and say their estimates were wrong. And, and we've made an adjustment to their projections to reflect that. Just, just throwing an idea just, out there to think about. To add some I think that's a really good, I think that's a really good point. Again, interpreting some things becomes very valuable to you. Doing what's expected is less so. The expected is necessary, but the 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 the, uh, the true worth of us in this is coming up with the unexpected and credible that we stand on. Anyway, those are those are some of the things immediately that I wanted to suggest to you. Um, I think in this that uh, we don't have enough information to do a market value of debt as you've been schooled to do. Uh, we don't see that data. I don't think we're going to see that data. And so we have to, I think, take what I suppose are their book values for debt and, so, and use those. Uh, we can then think about some market caps of equities uh, because they give us uh, trading amounts as a publicly held firm, right? Uh, we can then look at uh, the, this, and we're not going to look at these guys for expressly for, uh, for WAF because we don't have beta and such. Uh, you can look again at Duffin Phelps. Um, did they reach out to you? These guys reach out to you at all, Jeff, as they were going through Duff and Phelps? Good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And I know one team had the benefit of that. Uh, the other team, have you seen or heard from Robin? Uh, have you called him? We've included him in the emails. I know, but have you called him? No. Okay. Start knocking on his door. He's going to do it telephonically. Text. You got his cell phone number. Okay. And, uh, and, and, and I'll do it as well. I'll do it as well. Especially now that we're in the push, right? Yeah. Jeff, you've been extraordinarily valuable. Please don't misunderstand. This, this is I just want more. Yeah, no, this is fun. Okay. It, has Matt reached out to you at all? I reached no. out to him, and uh, he, I thought he was going to be here tonight. Yeah, so but Yeah, I, he hasn't. Okay. Yeah. And I, 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 I'm not. Yeah. Number of times. Yep. Um, and here's a question I've got for you, and I just don't know the answer. Uh, on uh, A, appendix A, operating metrics, final column minority interest. I know how you might handle minority interest if you knew more about what was going on there. I don't know how to handle it with such limited data to you. No, uh, but let me get back to you. So just so you know what we're dealing with, if a company has a minority interest in another firm, then that's simply an investment that they have, yeah. and you're going to take that minority interest out because you're supposing that we're receiving the market value of the minority interest when it's being shown to us, but we don't have data to tell us that. Now, I already have an email out to uh, David Beard to ask if they're going to give us the benefit of something like a CEO or a CFO conference call, because these, there's some really interesting questions here that we can make assumptions, but credible, non-credible, I don't want to just make cartoon <coughs> assumptions, right? Yeah, right, Greg? So I don't want to make car or excuse me, Alex, I don't want to make cartoon assumptions. Uh, I don't know if they're going to do that for us or not. Yeah, Jordan. So since we're on this consult page, um, I still have this question for Jeff and for Rick. Um, how confident can we be to evaluate a private company using public companies? This is a public company. So. Yeah, this, this is a public but publicly held. But but coming back to your to, to your question, which I really is not relevant for this one because they are public com companies. Oh, I, oh, I thought we're uh, relevant private companies. No, I, I use public companies all the time regarding private yeah. companies. I mean, the, the the rule of thumb is generally ten times revenue. Mm -hmm. You don't want to go more than that. But all I usually test that and say, does revenue size really make a difference on the multiple? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they, this, they say this is public, and that's part of what's at issue here. Can we devise a protection strategy to keep it in the keep it public? Can we re-engineer it from within and keep it public? Can we argue to the existing shareholders it's worth substantially more on the equity side than the $200 million being offered for it? It's 
Currently, the equity is trading at about $120 million. It's being offered $200 million. Can we justify the $200 million? Can we justify a lot more than the $200 million? Can we, can we argue that, yeah, maybe going uh, private in a good private equity hand is a good idea? Because frankly, Max and his, his uh, leather shorts, not so much with that. But this isn't a private equity firm to go with. But let's go shop ourselves to a firm that's going to pay us fair market value, which is maybe a very different number, or maybe a much larger number. In fact, running some very quick numbers, uh, I don't think the $200 million even comes close to what it should be. I think it's still a bargain. Yeah. That, that's me just in some really quick numbers, OK? Um, can I make one comment? Please. Because I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to mislead anybody here. My, my 10% rule of thumb is true. I mean, th there are a ton of different scenarios in this thing. And so if you're going to use multiple approaches for a single scenario, I would stick with my 10% rule of thumb. But if you're using different scenarios, that 10% will not apply. Yeah. I think, I assume that's clear, but I want to, yeah. I just want to make sure. I mean, those are the items that I immediately pulled out. Let me see what this is. Anything else here? Those are the items I immediately pulled out. Um, I'd like uh, you guys, uh, team leaders, to work uh, again within the next 48 hours with your teams. I get together, beat this up, uh, identify questions, weak points, strong points, uh, copy me on all communication, copy me and Jeff uh, and Robin on all communication, and Colton. Uh, on this, I'm available. I got more than enough time on my hands right now, guys. Yeah. <laughs> hey, no, no. You can use him as a mentor, somebody that's done some of this, or you can use him as a minion. And he just said that he's got plenty of time. That's right. It's choose wisely, though. <laughs> you guys have been using me as a minion for some years. I use somebody else that way. Right? <laughs> Please use me as a minion, a mentor. Just pay whatever you want. And then uh, next I'm week cheap. we're here at the same time. Uh, I want to work with Team A first directly at 6.30, and I want to work with Team B no later than 7.30, maybe even earlier than that, okay? Uh, and in the meantime, I expect you guys to be accessing me more readily than you did as you were working on these things on your own, because you're doing some prep and, and your other mentors as well. Anything else you want to add into this at the moment, Jeff? You know, the one comment I'll say is, I, is I've watched your presentations the last few weeks. Uh, and this is uh, this is coming from my personal background. I said this on our very first meeting. My preference is to look at the cash flows. You guys are pretty quick to quick to accept projections. I would strongly encourage you to stop that. Um, challenge the projections. Make them your own and have a reason why they're out. So, so they've given us projections in any case. Uh, I, you can use them if you want, and we might look at it and decide we should use them. And we have a beautiful scenario here. We have projections that are being made five years ago. Let's look at how some casual men's clothiers and merchandise or, or manufacturers have have uh, progressed. We, you've got a dozen of them probably that are publicly held. Just look at their annual reports. And you can then say, well, these guys, you guys are projecting this, but we think you're wrong. And you have the beauty and value of not having to guess. I do that in court all the time. I'm sure that's true. That's yeah. exactly what I do. because because. I mean, you talk about value in companies years, years past. The longest back I've gone was I had value a casino in 1991. Uh, and I was doing that in 2016, 2015. Uh, and so, yeah, you're absolutely, I actually do that. And I, and I say, well, Your Honor, look, I can see what the company's actually done. I can see what the industry's done. That's why I believe my projections are reasonable. Now, that may not fly here. You know, there, there's debate and evaluations of whether that's a reasonable approach to, and even the courts, that's not reasonable. That, that, that there's some debate, but, but I, I, I certainly look at it. Well, and my guess, and it's only that. Okay, and and, and next year maybe I won't have to guess on this. All right, but my guess is, if we come up with something that we can credibly defend, then there'll be more respect for your creativity than than uh, fault being uh, assigned to you for not having lived within somebody's expectation of a rule of the one written down. That's my guess. Okay. You're differentiating yourselves from 23 other teams of people uh, that are bright at colleges across the country. You just got to do a good job. Get creative. That's why I think one of you on each team simply needs to be writing the narrative of 
very creative narrative. And a scripted narrative, as it turns out, perhaps. Okay? It's not going to be just a one-shot deal like we had here with the camera. You're gonna, in fact, I'm not even sure we're going to put faces on the camera. It may be Khan Academy-ish something else going on, right? Yeah. For a video, are we going to still put the video in here, or do they um, count as one of the videos? It's going to be completely dependent upon how you decide your medium should look. If it is not a video with people, then we'll actually try to use a, a better room than either of these where we have some links that the production required, right? Yeah. But if it's if we're not doing a video, if we're doing some Camtasia sort of captured uh, <coughs> with good graphics, etc. thing, then it's voice recording and everything else digital. Yeah. Um, just as we work through, I challenge everyone to just constantly be questioning yourself and the assumptions you make and the the things that you decide to do and also question other teammates because the more we do that as we are building out our valuations, then we'll be ready for questions that the judges may have or um, you know other people because there are there are always going to be questions and the, the more we hear them within ourselves, you know, the, like I said, the more prepared we're going to be when it comes crunch time. When it comes to and, and this, by the way, is why in each of our two exposures here. I've asked the students of the other team to ask the first questions. Now you've been reticent to do so. But you guys have all been in venues, in classes, and in the CFA preparations, where I've been one of the people responsible to ask the questions. Am I fairly aggressive in the questions I ask? I get right down to the point and put you on the spot? Absolutely. And I'm a nice guy by comparison. Okay. All right. We've got some work to do. 